Thanks for joining us here on 90s Plus. I'm Chris Bianchi. Now, a lot of you probably like artificial sweeteners for something. If it's not in your food, maybe it's for your coffee, for your morning beverage, whatever it is. But there is new and perhaps growing evidence that artificial sweeteners may lead to an increase in the risk for heart attack or for strokes. So we're going to kind of get into this, and it's spe specifically about erythritol. I had a little trouble pronouncing that before we got on, but for a bit more on this, Dr. Pyle Coley, our 90s medical expert, joins us for a bit more on erythritol and a bit more about how it works. Uh, Dr. Coley, just tell us a bit more about it and exactly how it impacts us. Erythritol, is, you know, sounds like a, a big word, but it's a naturally occurring sugar. Okay. Okay, and it's about 70% hmm. as sweet as, as regular sugar, and it occurs in our body as well. So our body actually makes it. We also find it in fruits, and we can find it in fermented foods, and you can make hmm. it from fermenting corn, basically. Uh, and it occurs in substances like our eye, our serum, our plasma. And when we ingest erythritol, it's largely not metabolized, actually just kind of goes into our bloodstream and then we pee it out into our urine. And one of the reasons we thought erythritol, Chris, was so safe is because it occurs naturally. Mm -hmm. It's found within our body, it's found within foods. And so using it to sweeten things, you know, maybe we thought was it the right way to go. And in fact, we were even encouraging many of our patients that struggle with sugar, like diabetics and such, to switch to artificial sweeteners because we thought that was a safer option. But now we're learning otherwise. And what are we learning otherwise? That there is an increased risk for heart attack or stroke with it? Well, what we're seeing is, is that it's associated with an increased risk. So what we don't yet know, hmm. we think, might be a causation, but we haven't established that. Does it cause a higher risk, or is it more of a marker that if you're using artificial sweeteners, maybe you're doing something else that's not hmm. quite as healthy, and this is just a marker for some other unhealthy behavior that potentially could be increasing your risk. So we don't know if it's a causation or an association. We worry that it might be a causation because we have, if you take erythritol and sprinkle it onto platelets, which are cells that form blood clots, and what causes heart attacks and strokes are blood clots right in the blood vessel that block blood flow but if you sprinkle it on these platelet cells you can actually increase platelet reactivity meaning you cause them to stick together hmm. significantly more with with very high levels of erythritol so if you boost up your erythritol levels that's what causes the platelet to stick and if you actually look at the data the patients that have the highest erythritol levels seem to be the ones that maybe potentially have the highest risk where do we find erythritol? Is it in a lot of foods, drinks? Where do we find it? Yeah, it can be in many naturally occurring foods. Uh, we can ferment it from corn, uh, and it's basically a fermenting process using yeast that makes the erythritol. And in our body, it's naturally found in you know our eye, in our serum, in our plasma, in our urine, in many different, it's even found in the fetal fluid, actually. So it's a naturally occurring sugar, but too much of a good thing, Chris, is a bad thing. And that's what we're seeing, that it's not the low levels of erythritol that seem to be associated with the risk, but the really sort of high levels that you can get with ingesting large amounts of artificial sweetener, even kind of the standard amounts that you would use in your beverages or in your foods. So you mentioned large amounts versus small amounts. I think it's a common theme often with, when it comes to food or diet-based things. Um, is there a certain amount that if you're, you got a patient that you would suggest maybe once or twice a week with with a sweetener sweetener honestly i tell my patients to stay away from them okay entirely because I, yes because we don't know them we don't study them that well and erythritol is one of those mm. that sort of snuck by because it's naturally occurring and it doesn't cause as much side effects as some of the other sugars out there so the fda doesn't really even always require them to put it on the label so you may even be ingesting substances that have erythritol that's not even necessarily on the label mm. that has it so i generally tend to tell my patients to sort of stay away from artificial sweeteners or those types of chemicals because we know it's not just erythritol it's sucralose it's some of the other ones and this is not the only study this is sort of one piece of a growing body of evidence that artificial sweeteners are associated with higher risk different types this is erythritol specific but we've looked at sucralose we've looked at others that can potentially be associated with higher risk so i just generally tell my patients you know real food and not a lot of it don't eat a lot of the chemicals and if you're someone who's specifically diabetic or struggles with sugar control then you need to talk to your doctor about your specific case but in general don't think that necessarily any amount of these types of chemicals are safe so let's think about maybe alternatives here are there good healthier alternatives for people looking for a little bit more flavor in their black coffee i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i would say probably brown sugar is better than white sugar um, and limiting the dose of that sugar itself so i know some of us are very used to being having a very sweet taste and as we grow older actually our, our receptors in our tongue don't work as well 
So sometimes we need stronger、mm. flavors, whether it comes to salt or sugar or what have you. Sometimes we just need more of it to get、mm. that kick. So some of it is just habit forming, but if with sugar, especially pure sugar, it's just not a good idea because I just want people to start thinking about sugar as like toxin to their arteries because that's exactly what it is. And you know, if you're putting it spoonfuls of it, my mom does this with her tea, <laughs> shovels it in. It's just not going to be good for you. It's going to create inflammation. It's going to create all kinds of metabolic effects that are not unhealthy at all. Yeah, but Dr. Coley, the thing you're overlooking is how good it tastes.、Um, that, that's and it's highly addictive. You know, and so that's the other thing. It sort of triggers that center in our brain that that makes us feel good, and so we want to have more of it. But that's really not how we should be approaching our eating behaviors and such. Now, I don't want people to panic if they use a little tiny bit of artificial sweetener. That's probably okay. But again, talk to your doctor if you're concerned. But I'm just I, my sort of caution to put out there is that the FDA does not regulate these types of products、mm. at quite the same level as they regulate supplements, and certainly not the level that they regulate medications on. So sometimes a lot of things end up getting into your body, going into your bloodstream that you may not even realize. That's interesting to me. So the FDA does not regulate this as strictly as other foods. How does that work? Yeah, you know, and because it's a naturally occurring substance with erythritol, they said the World Health Organization, Japan declared it safe, WHO declared it safe. And the FDA in the United States called it a, a classification generally considered safe, which means that these、hmm. types of natural substances are probably okay. Now we haven't done sophisticated dose-dependent studies. Is it? Is there a threshold? Is there an inflection point beyond which it starts to become more toxic? But this type of research, the study that just came out that showed us if you have high levels of erythritol, your risk can be twice as high of heart attacks, strokes, or dying from heart disease. That really does raise an alarm. And hopefully, what I'm I'm hoping for is that these types of substances get a little bit more regulated in the future, where the FDA does start to pay more closer attention. But until that happens, it's really up to each of us to take on what we're putting inside our body, you know, and hold it to a very high standard. It's this latest study from the Cleveland Clinic that's really kind of sparked a little bit of that interest in it. And I was going to ask you if the FDA is going to start looking into it. Hopefully, there is a bit more light on it.、Um, Are there specific groups of people, maybe diabetics, that could be a bit more vulnerable here? There really are, and diabetics for sure at the top of the list because number one, they're very they're, they don't metabolize even their normal sugar、mm. normally, right? Their sugar levels tend to run high. Number two, these are the people that generally we advise to use sugar alternatives for, or try to minimize how much sugar they're taking. Number three, diabetics by their inherent nature are extremely high risk for heart disease. In fact, we consider diabetes, you know, sometimes as having had a heart attack equivalent.、Like That's how much it increases your risk for heart disease. We put diabetics in a special category when it comes to thinking about their heart disease risk. So you've got diabetics with high sugars who already have sticky arteries, and then you've got them using potentially more of this, you know, erythritol, which maybe makes the platelet stickier and causes more things to stick inside the arteries, causes blood clots to form. So it's really the perfect storm for diabetics. But I would say really anyone who has chronic disease would be higher risk. So I'm thinking patients with hypertension, high cholesterol. Um, uh, high blood pressure, patients who have obesity,、uh, patients who have chronic lung disease—all of these are individuals that have high levels of chronic inflammation, and then of course autoimmune diseases as well: lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, HIV. Anything that really causes things to stick because of the inflammation can increase your baseline risk, and then this erythritol business can potentially push you over the edge.、Uh, anything else we should know about erythritol that? Kind of applies to us on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, again,、uh, it is found in some foods, so don't panic if there's erythritol in something that you're eating. But I would say that it's really important for us to to keep in mind, like in every, everything in life, there is there's a dose. Just like with alcohol, just like with anything else that we do, if you have small amounts of it and your body can kind of metabolize and get rid of it, it's probably okay. It's when You can't metabolize it because it goes into your bloodstream. The concentration goes very high. That's when it starts to cause problems. So if you need、mm. to use a little bit of artificial sweetener in your coffee every morning with some erythritol in it, that's probably okay. Check with your doctor, but just don't be pouring that stuff in because you think it's zero calories and it's risk-free because that's not the case. All right, so be careful with it, but、uh, as everything. Um, everything in moderation, right, Dr. Coley? That's exactly right. You got it. All right, I nailed it. All right, <laughs> Dr. Coley, thanks so much for joining us here.